So I am going to be making the full coverage front. So I have my pieces cut out. You're going to cut um, one of these on the fold. And when you do, you're gonna make sure that you mark where you're either gonna gather or you're gonna make a dart. Um, and then you're also going to make a mark up here. So I cut one of these out and then you also have a lining piece that is different. Um, and it's different because it has a place to hem it and insert cuts. So you're also going to want to mark either gather or dart on that one as well as this dot. You're also going to need your back. So if you're making a full coverage front, you don't have to use this back. You have the choice of four different back options. So you can do a pullover back or you can do a halter back. And on the pullover back, you can have it to where it's just cut on the fold and it, there's no, no clasp at the back. And the same thing is true of the other one so if essentially you can boil it down to where there's just two backs and then those two backs have the option of the ability to close open and close or just pull over you so i chose on this one that i'm going to do um, the s hook or tie you back and i i'm going to use the swim hooks so if you use swim hooks you need the one inch another supply i, I got are bra cuts for these and those are optional but very nice very nice to have so I'm ready to get started the first thing I'm going to be doing is um, working on gathering so I'm going to since I marked mine for gathering if you marked yours for a dot then you for I'm sorry for a dart then you would put it right sides together and sew your dart but since I'm gathering I am going to just do a basting stitch so a long straight stitch um, across here and then I'm going to get, pull my threads until it measures one inch across and I'm going to do that on all four so on my main two on my main and then two on my lining I sewed my straight stitch my long straight stitch and I did not back stitch at the beginning and I did not back stitch at the end and I am going to pull my bobbin thread until it's about an inch I do it on my mat so I can tell. And I'm going to do that on all four. And after you have finished doing that, then it is time, make sure you don't pull it out. Then it, I'm sorry, then it is time to hem the edge of our main lining. I shouldn't say our main lining, our front lining. So you're just going to fold that under and then sew a stretch stitch right there. And also going to gather these and if yours keeps coming out you can knot your ends but I didn't okay so now I'm going to go and hem this and I'll be right back now we are ready to sew our side seams and to do so we're going to start by placing whatever back option you've chosen you're going to face it to where the right side is facing you so you're going to lay it down with the right side facing you this is the um, the, for the swim hook with the um, pull, the U-shaped back. So I have that one down and now I'm going to lay my front piece right side facing down. So I'm gonna lay it on top of it and you're lining up your side seams. And so right now we have our back facing up, we have our front facing down and their right sides together. So now you're going to grab your lining, you're going to grab the front lining, and you're going to lay it right side facing up. And then you are going to grab your back lining, and you're going to put it right side facing down. And you know which one is the side seam and which one is the middle on this one, because the side seam is, um, is wider. So that's how I can tell those apart. And so, oh, I'm gonna make sure it's right side facing down. Yep, that's right side facing down. And this one is right side facing down. And so now I have my four layers like just like this, and I'm gonna sew my side seams. So I'm gonna make sure I match all these up. Now notice that your lining is not gonna be caught in that seam because you've hemmed this. Or I should say this part of the lining is not being caught in the seam. 
So we're going to sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So your lining is not going to be caught in this side seam. So in order for it not to lose its place, kind of line up your dots or your dart right here and then check where it's even and then clip it down and do the same thing at the top. Clip it, um, by clip it down, I mean to clip it down to the main. Um, so just kind of clip it so that it's holding its place. And you notice it's not gonna be caught in this seam. So it's gonna be kind of loose. So you're gonna need these clips and do that on both sides. So I'm lining up where I've gathered and I'm just kind of placing a clip there so that it's in its right place. And I'm doing it on the top and the bottom. So now we're gonna sew these side seams and the, we're gonna be catching three layers from our kind of like a sandwich, I guess, into our side seams. And it's going to be, the layers are your back, front, and then back as I had you sandwich them. And we're sewing these with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Let me put that back on. And making sure you don't catch that. And the reason is, is because we want, when it opens up, we want to be able to um, put our cups in through these openings in the lining. Okay, so I've sewn my side seams from our sandwich. Let me show you what it looked like when I was finished sewing them so you can kind of get a feel for where you're at. I think this is one of the most complicated parts of this pattern, but once you see what you're doing, you'll say, oh, I get it. Or at least I hope you have that moment. Okay, so it looks like this right now, and then you can pull apart the back pieces from the front pieces. And if you are not doing the S-hook back or the tie back and you're just doing it to where it's cut on the fold on your back, then it's not going to open up flat like this. It'll open up in the round. So look, it's all nice and open. And our next step is we're going to baste all these layers together and it's going to make applying elastic so much easier. So we're going to kind of line everything up and we're going to we're going to baste and we have a lot to baste so you're going to baste from the lining side so you're going to have the lining facing up on your machine and you're going to have i would say about a 4.0 stitch length and just find somewhere to start and then it doesn't even all fit on the camera so and then you're going to start on that end and you're just going to go all the way around it whenever you get here you're just going to make sure that there's you can see where the opening is to stick something so you're not shutting that but you're basting down all along here and getting every all the edges to line up as evenly as you can and then when you're done basting I'll be back and we'll be ready for the next step ready to apply elastic Okay, so now on this step, we should have all of our layers basted. And now that they're all basted, you can try on and check for fit. And what you're checking for when you check for fit is that it is in the right spot this way. So if you need to take any out of the shoulders, now is a good time to do it. It's so hard to check for fit whenever you have the open back because you're doing the swim hook or you're doing the halters or the, the ties in the back. Um, and when you're doing that, it's so hard to try on because you can't really clip it. It's going to come undone. But so you're just going to kind of, um, whenever I tried it on, I held it in the back and I just held and saw that it landed whenever I took out my seam allowance, that it landed where I want my best to land whenever it's even. Um, and once you have that, let me show you what it's going to look like. Okay. So all the layers are basted and our next step is, is that we're gonna sew our shoulder seams together. So once you've sewn your shoulder seams together and you've determined whenever you checked fit that yeah, I can use my normal seam allowance or I need to take extra seam allowance um, and then you're gonna sew that with your serger using a stretch stitch. And once we've done that, we're gonna sew our elastic. 
and you're going to be sewing elastic, there's three different areas. You're gonna sew each armhole, that's two, and then your other one is you're going to sew starting here, and you're going to go all the way along the edge of this top. We are talking about elastic. So I've sewn my shoulders together, and we're looking at the elastic chart, and the elastic chart might be kind of confusing because there's so many options in your kind of not sure what you're looking at and I'm here to tell you what to look at for this option. So this is for the full coverage front and the full coverage front is the one that you have this fabric in the middle. The other um, front options all go to a V like this to the bottom. So you need to figure out the elastic measurements for your arm side and then there is another one you need and that is for this full big neckline. So the first thing I'm gonna look at where it says on the measurement chart I'm looking at it says back slash arm side. And that is gonna tell you what to cut for this. And for this option, since I have the, the U back, I have the elastic, it's the third one, and it'll say pull over or hook. So whether you're, you have it to where it's connected here or you have it, if it's connected, yours is gonna look like this. Um, so whether you have it connected here or you have this, you are cutting out, it doesn't matter because your armhole is the same. Um, you are going to cut that out. And it's the third one, you're cutting two for the smallest size, it says 15 and a quarter. Okay, so you're gonna cut two of those for that. And it's the 3 8 inch elastic. Um, just make sure you're using swim elastic. I have a roll of the rubber that's wrapped with polyester. And I also have some rubber laying around here somewhere. Okay, so you're also gonna cut out what you need for this neckline. And for this neckline, it is going to be under neckline. And it is the last one, under full coverage. You are looking for pull over and it says S hook or tie back. So it's the second to the last of that section. And you need to cut 33 inches if you're making the smallest size and you'll see it go up from there. So it is the middle of the full coverage under neckline. Um, and once you get those cut out, you're gonna wanna quarter your elastic so that you know how evenly to stretch it in those areas. So let's go to the machine. Okay, I'm at my machine and I have cut the length of elastic that I need. And usually you'll sew it into a loop the way that you're, so you'll overlap it a half and then you'll zigzag that close. And you can do that and it's usually highly recommended. I just never do because um, you're gonna be sewing it to the wrong side. And once you sew it down, you're going to be encasing it whenever you top stitch. So nobody's gonna know if you did or not. And the reason I stopped doing that is because um, if you end up having to have a little bit extra, it's easy to cut off or you're not like at the last minute stretching it like crazy. So anyways, we are going to be applying it to the wrong side. I am going to fold it in half and find my halfway point. You can also find your quarter point, find something to mark it. I'm ready to sew my elastic on. You can use your serger or a stretch stitch. Um, if you use a stretch stitch, you're going to want to use a zigzag. I've probably told you already several times what my favorite zigzag is. So I'm gonna start on this way just because this is the way that I can go um, and sew on the lining side. I always find it easier to sew on lining than I do to sew on the swim side. Make sure that if your knife is on that you are not trimming your elastic. And I can already see that when I'm looking at my first point that I have to match up, I don't know if you can see that, but I can see how much I'm gonna need to stretch it to get to that point. So that means that I'm gonna, as soon as I see, and you gotta wait until you see that your, um, your needles and your serger seam has already started to catch the beginning of your elastic, because if you start pulling it before that, then you're just gonna pull your elastic straight out and have to start over. So as soon as I can see that it's caught that, I'm gonna start stretching. One of the reasons that people like to go ahead and sew it in a loop is because it's so hard to stretch that last section. So um, if that part is harder for the, you, then you might want to do that. Okay. So now on my next armhole, I'm gonna do it with my elastic in the round because I noticed on my first armhole that I did that I didn't have to cut any off. So I know that I'm fine to go ahead and do this. Whenever I do my first one, I always um, like to not do it in the round just so I can easily trim off any excess if my elastic is stretchier than what the measurement calls for. Um, but I didn't have to do that. So um, I'm just going to start by putting it on the wrong side, on the where the lining is. And I'm going to put where I connected the elastic. 
right there on that seam. And I'm going to start by sewing this way because this is the way that allows me to sew on the lining. So I'm going in a different direction than I did the last time just because I like to sew on the lining side. I'm being very careful that I'm not letting my knife trim my elastic. And now that I can see that my elastic has been caught in the seam, I can start stretching. We are sewing the elastic onto the neckline now, and we're going to need to quarter it. So you're gonna mark your center, and then you are going to start three eighths of an inch away from where the end of the neckline is. And you'll use that as a guide to find the center points between your center and your end. And then you'll mark that. Mine ended up being um, closer to the back. And I marked that on both sides. And now you're gonna go to your machine, your, either your sewing machine with the zigzag or your serger with the stretch stitch. And you're gonna start about 3 eighths of an inch away from that. Because after we've put our elastic in and top stitch everything down, you'll, um, when it's folded this way, then you're gonna need to um, have that elastic out of that seam allowance so that you can wrap that around your swim hook or around your ties if you wanna construct it with ties. So you're gonna have your quarter points marked so that you know how much you're stretching this elastic. So you're gonna to need to be able to stretch it. So sew it with the elastic up onto your lining side. Okay, so now we have our elastic all sewn onto our arm side as well as the full amount of our neckline. And we are gonna turn it under and top stitch. So all you're gonna do is turn your edge under and you're gonna top stitch it. I like to top stitch it from the wrong side. So I'll have my bobbin thread match the right side, of, the main side of my fabric. And while I'm doing it, you're gonna pull it taut so that um, you're not puckering the fabric as you go. Cause if you just leave it um, normal, you're gonna get all these little um, wrinkles in your fabric. But if when you're sewing it, that you stretch your el elastic to where your fabric is even and that there's no puckers in it, um, then you're gonna have a nice even top stitch. So I top stitch on my machine using a zigzag. If you have a cover stitch, then you will wanna cover stitch it from the side that you want um, your lines to show on. So you might wanna do it on this side. Since I'm using my regular machine at a zigzag, I will set my stitch length at two and a half and I will set my stitch width between two and a half and three. So I'm going to go ahead and top stitch all of this down and then we'll be back for the next step. So now that we have our top all top stitched down, it's going to look like this whenever it's laying flat. It's going to look, you know, gathered and bunched, but that's because when it's on your body, it's going to stretch and it's going to look nice and even. And so now we have that done. Now we need to work on our bottom band. And um, so you're going to cut out the top casing. It's piece number 14. And you're, um, if you want to do the swim hook or you want to, to do um, the ties, or sorry, just for the swim hook, you're gonna do cut it on this line. But if you're doing the pullover or tie back bodice, you would cut on this line. So since I'm doing the swim hook, I cut on this one. And now I'm going to make a mark on both sides that is one and a half inches in. So I'm going to mark right here and then I'm going to sew, I'm gonna put it right sides together and I'm going to sew this way on that mark. Well, I have sewn on my band, it's this long and on each end I've sewn it right sides together and I've only sewn the first inch and a half using a stretch stitch on my sewing machine. And now, right where that mark is, we're going to cut up towards our stitching, but not through our stitching. Right where my stitching ends. And I'm gonna do that on both sides. And now I'm gonna turn it right sides out. 
And this is what it'll look like from the right side. So you'll have the finished part, and this is the part that you'll wrap around your swim hook or make for the, where the swim hook connects. And then you'll do the same thing here. And then you see the raw edge. And you sewed this with a 3 8 inch seam. So now you are going to take your bodice and you are going to put your band right sides together, right sides of the bodice, and the end right here for the swim hook is going to be flush with that end like that. And you're going to sew, you'll have 3 eighths of an inch right here and you're gonna sew all along that and it's gonna end that same way on each side. And I'm going to go ahead and mark where my center points are on my band and on my bodice so that I know I that to evenly stretch it because it is you're going to end up stretching your band but not your your bodice so I'm going to sew that with my serger and then we'll be ready to put in our under our under bust elastic okay, so now we are ready to put the elastic in the under bust on our swim I see I already put my cuts in and all we have left is to do the elastic and then to do our swim hook so you're going to go on the elastic measurement chart and it's the very last line item and it says front under bust cut one one inch and you're going to find the number for you on there and you're going to um, cut out that measurement and now since we are not having to cut it in half we're just going to get a safety pin and we're going to fish it through this channel i fished my elastic through and i just wanted to show you before we do the swim hook that you're gonna need to tack that elastic down so it doesn't get lost in your casing. But you don't wanna tack it all the way at the end because then it's gonna be really hard to fold this over your swim hook or to catch it. So you want to actually um, do it just right, right outside of that casing, like over here. Um, so once you have it fished to where you want it, it's really scary to like let go of it because you're thinking, oh my goodness, if I don't have if I don't have something in there, I might lose it. So just keep, you might even wanna, one thing you can do is pin it underneath there. So you're just gonna do some zigzags to just kinda tack it down in place. And then I'll be right back and we'll just uh, um, do this one. Okay, so I've tacked down my elastic and while I was there, I tacked down the seam and where you connect the band to the body just so that it doesn't flip up. So I tack that down and now on one side, all you're going to do is um, fold the band to the wrong side like this to create like a loop. And then you're just gonna tack it right down with a zigzag stitch again, right where um, you sewed before. So that's on one side. So I'm gonna put a clip there so I'm ready for my machine. And then on the other side, I'm going to get my swim hook. And on your swim hook, you're gonna make sure that the hook part is facing down. You don't wanna hook, let me make sure. Yes, you wanna hook down. So you're going to put the pink band in the circle or oval part, and then you're gonna put this here, and then you're gonna hook this way. I'll show you again from this angle. So I'm going to also tack this down in the same. So I'm gonna put a clip there. So you see what the, this is gonna look like. I'm done with my full coverage front with the pullover, or not the pullover, but the, the U-swim hook back. So remember that this swim hook goes this way and this is where I've attached all that. You can kind of see my, the fabric I had that matched didn't match perfect, but good enough. And, um, there you have it. You are ready to go to the beach.